Well, it's frustrating, but it's it's the game of tennis. Um, a lot of swings in in the match today, and um, you know, I certainly had the lead and the advantage. Um, she picked up her game, and um, you know, in the third, I think a lot of it had to do with the returns. I didn't I didn't do much on her service games. You know, she was winning them pretty easy. Um, you know, on, on mine, uh, they were quite long and just making too many errors, not putting any pressure on her. Um, so that that's, I think, the most frustrating part. Talk about the last game. You're so dependent on the whole third set, which is obviously tough anyways, and then to get two games plus ten, you're just, just trying to hold. So yeah. what do you feel in going out there at four or five? It looks like there was time. Yeah, it's a tough, tough position, but I got myself back from lot 30 and from match point, and... Um, you know, and like I said, she returned much better in those situations than I did. I think I gave her too many free points, and in, in that this type of match and this, these circumstances, that, you know, you're not not putting that much pressure on your opponent. It's difficult. It's a difficult situation to go into, definitely. Were you starting out up three love? You were very confident at, at that point. What what happened at that moment after you went from three one? Well, I, I mean, I was up a set in a break, and I had game points to go up to zero, I think, a few. Um, and there's no doubt that she raised her level, and she started playing better and moving better. Um, you know, a few little things here and there could have certainly changed things around. Was it, was it so for seeing the no game, no game? Well, I, when you're in that when you're in that battle, you're not thinking about your opponent. Of course, you have a strategy, and you're thinking of a few things that will help you. But a lot of it is is instinct and um, believing your game is will eventually win you the match. But like I said, I, I think I didn't make her play in, in certain situations of that third. I mean, we can discuss the first and the second, but ultimately, when it gets to that third set and um, I just don't think I did enough on those on those games to, to put any thought in her mind. I mean, it's not that she's bombed the serve like Serena. I mean, I know she's pretty consistent with her first serve, but are you just not getting a good hit on the ball, or is she tougher to read? Yeah, it w wasn't at all, especially in the third. I wasn't doing anything with it. And I, was, I think I was making one or two errors, not even making her play, which is, you know, which is not good. And I thought it... I was doing a much better job of that in the first and the second, and I think that put a lot of pressure on her service games, but, you know, not in the third. Is there any moment where you thought about you just getting that record to zero? I know it brought to your attention the other day. Yeah, well, it was four all, and anything can happen at that point, but this one just didn't go my way. Maria, how different a player is she on hard court versus another serve? Um, well, I think I've only played against her on hard and, and clay. Um, no, yeah, well, she's certainly improved her movement on the hard courts, and you know she's in good shape right now. Um, yeah, I don't think we. I mean, we, we were out there for over two hours, but I think both of us could still run and and play for a while. I mean, I I still felt I didn't feel too tired in the end, and she certainly had a lot of energy. Um, but as far as the differences, I I, I only played her one match on clay, so. Marie, you've been off court for just a, a little bit, but the slam season is now over for you, but you you had some fabulous results. Could you just talk about your year of winning the slams and what, well, overall, you know, what, what, what it's meant to you through these last few years? I'll take them. You know, I'll take the results <laughs> I had this year. <laughs> I look back at in the beginning of the season and, you know, not really – I remember going to Australia early, not really sure if I was going to play that warm-up tournament. My ankle's still not feeling great. So if someone had told me, um, you know, when I had that uncertainty going into the Australian Open that I would have this type of season, and like it's still not over, we still have a few more events to play, I, you know, I would have been pretty happy. Of course, like you mentioned, this is the last one. It's really where I would have, you know, loved to, 
to get even further, but it's certainly a step better than the last few years I've been here. So. How would you want in terms of what in numbers? Or? Did you feel did you go out there feeling like top of your game, everything was working well? Was your flow okay? Well, I mean, I, I can look at it so many different ways. I, you know, I like I said, there were a lot of swings in the match, and I was up, and I, I mean, who knows if it's two zero, and you know, she starts thinking, but you know, when, when I had my opportunities, I don't think I took them, and I. I I think when you're in, in the situation of a third set, you you got to put pressure on your opponent, and I just I don't think I I did that at all. Given given that Selena as you can tell is sort of dominating right now against the Rami in the six five one, mm -hmm. um, assuming that she does play again in the final, is there anything anybody really can do against her when she's playing the dominating tennis that she's playing right now? And what does that do? I'm not her coach. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not in my job description. <laughs> um, I there's a reason why everyone is is in the draw. There's a reason why everyone puts the net up in the morning for us to play matches, no matter who's going in there as a favorite, no matter how confident they are. Um, everyone has a chance, and there's no reason why she's number one in the world, and there's no reason why she shouldn't have a chance. Well, it's it's a grand it's New York it's a Grand Slam it's the U S Open and you know, of course it's meaningful you you want to perform well you're you're in a battle out there and and this is what you practice for is to get in those situations and try to get out of them and today I just didn't. Do you stick around both professionally for at home or what do you do? Um, I don't know I've been in the city for three weeks so it's it's been a while but. Looking forward to checking out that ice cream truck that's around the corner from my hotel. It's been haunting me. <laughs> I'm telling the driver, like, get out of here. <laughs> I can't look at you anymore. But um, So I'll have time for that. But other than that, I, I think I, I miss home and just want to be in a home atmosphere for a little bit. What flavor? Vanilla with rainbow sprinkles. Maria, so you say to yourself, I can look at it so many different ways. Um, um, yeah, it, it's always it's always a little bit tougher when you feel like you have those chances and you. Um, the scoreline was a lot tougher this time, obviously, um, but the result wasn't what I wanted. So, in both of them. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, I try to to get a sense of that perspective as much as possible because you you can lose it so fast because you the grinding, um, the days, and and the work that you put in, and and then the tournaments, everything kind of just happens. It's a groove, and you you don't you. It's easy to forget where you kind of, where you came from and what you had to go through to get to that point. But when when I do think about it, I'm I'm so lucky. That I that I get to play the sport that that I love playing it still that I feel like I have a lot in me um, and that yeah I'm you know I'm number three in the world right now is num back at number one winning Grand Slams again so it's certainly a great feeling. I agree. I agree, definitely. There's nothing in life that gives you that. Such a, it, the sport, it, it's, it's like that moment that you experience. You know, the, the losing is always not fun, but the victories and everything just happens in moments. Whereas in other careers, I think everything, it's, it's such a different process. 
Um, I always, you know, always try to compare it to maybe other careers where, you know, you, you can be such a great actress, but or or a model, um, but if nobody puts you on a cover of a magazine, you can be so good, you can be extremely talented, but your career is always in the hands of other people, which is so difficult to think about. Or sometimes you can be kind of so-so, and then you're made into a star. <laughs> so it's um, it's a, such a unique situation, and I was in a position where I was out of the sport, and I got to do many things, but there's nothing like being in that moment, and I mean, as tough as these days are, it's always so gratifying when when you when you're sitting in a press conference at the end of winning a Grand Slam, you know, and, and talking about how you got to that point. It's just you know you can talk all day. It's such a great feeling. Is it also controlling your own destiny, where you say instead of somebody else choosing you for that magazine cover, you're making it happen on tennis court? A little bit, definitely. Uh, you're controlling a lot more of your life than maybe, and not that. Not that the other, I mean, I'm not trying to put down anybody else. It's just, it, it's just how it works in, in those situations. And, you know, I know many people in different industries, but I, I always relate so much to athletes in, in terms of just the, the feelings that they experience. Or, um, you know, it, it's almost like when someone does a movie for so many months and then, and then they go to the Oscars and then that moment that their movie is good is if they win the Oscar, you know. So... Just such a, it's a different thinking process for me. I, but I'm I'm so happy that I'm not in any other career. I, I wouldn't trade this for anything. Our sport is built around these four great slams with their with their center courts. You talked about the the thrill of being out there. Of the four center courts in, in the slams, what the most meaning or gives you the biggest charge or what do you love the most? I mean, each one is so different. I mean. The energy that you experience here in New York is is so unique. I mean, when when you're in the changeover and the music's just blasting, you don't have that. And even in Australia, it's not like that. In Wimbledon, it, it, there's so much tradition, and you you know, I love the I love the fact that you walk out on the court and there's no introductions. There's um, it's just it's a matter of just two athletes going out there, and it's all about them and their tennis. And this is, of course, much more of a show and more of a production. And but it's great to have all these different atmospheres, I guess. Maria, yeah. tennis often thrives on rivalries. How would you describe right now the state of your rivalry with Hika and where it might go? Yeah, well, we're we both have still have many years ahead of us, so I'm I'm sure that we'll be facing against each other many more times and um, uh, and Grand Slams and other tournaments and. Um, you know, she has the better record right now against me, and hopefully when I'm done, maybe we can change that around. How do you get overall the same approach? Excuse me? How do you get overall the same approach? Is there a special routine? What do you put in your mind? No, I think just putting things in perspective. I'm, uh, I'm certainly in the last few years, especially after my injury, I've been a lot better about accepting wins and accepting losses. Um, I think if... I try to think that if you're level-headed about, you know, difficult defeats or, um, and then if you get something in your career that's incredible, but if you take it as a, in, in a calm way, then the, the defeats don't seem as, as difficult. So I try to, I mean, after I won the French Open, of course, I was so, so happy, but I had this, this really calm feeling that, you know, like a settlement in, in my career, like, um, it wasn't like I wanted to go out and party and, you know, tell the whole world that I had won. It was just this feeling, like within me, that I achieved something that I that I worked for. And and losses, of course, they're difficult, and the world knows you lose, and that's their sport. But at the end of the day, that's what makes me better. You know, I feel like it may, motivates me to go back on the court and and to practice. Thank you. Yes, it is, of course. Enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks, Maria. Nice to mention that. Nice to mention that.